love the channel and find it useful in becoming a happy retiree. Subscribe today. Is this in a week? Dow Jones up a half a percent. So we've broken a, a multi-week losing streak. Finally, in the green, after all of the, the continued geopolitical worries around the world, North Korea continues to be in the headlines, China, you name it, Russia. And here we are with markets actually bouncing back a little bit. So up a half a percent for the Dow Jones uh, industrial average, up a little bit more than that call it 0.8 for the S&P 500, and then about 1.8%, bigger move for the NASDAQ for just the week. So far for the year, the Dow is up 3.9%, data check, S&P 500 up 4.9% for the year. And there's a lot to talk about here today on the Money Matters. I know it's a rainy day. It's one of those days where you might want to snuggle in or nestle in and listen to radio here on WSB. And... There's almost a, there's so many things to talk about today. The I have six or seven main topics. I, we did a lot of writing this week. It was one of those weeks where we just started. Every, every time I'd write an article, I think, oh, we need to write about this, and then it, we need to write about that. We need to write about and today talk about the difference between active and passive mutual funds or active and passive investing because there's been a a, a swirl of articles around this with a study that came out. Call it a week or so ago, published in the Wall Street Journal about how index funds in general, and, and particularly stock index funds, don't beat their index. So the actively managed mutual fund world is, is losing to ETFs, and they're losing on a one and three and five year basis. The problem with that headline is that it, it confuses investors thinking that, oh, I can just do this. And there's a big difference between investing in index funds and just pure indexing. They sound alike. Hey, I'm uh, indexing. Well, I'm No, I'm a pure indexer. Wait, I use index funds. Are we the same? No, you're not. Totally different. And with, that's the debate and the conversation that we need to have today and talk that through. I've also written for Clark Howard this week, five reasons I own dividend paying stocks. Clark said, hey, can you just do an article about dividend stocks? And I thought to myself, well, I think I feel like we've done that before, but it's one of these things that where maybe just not something that simple. Well, what, what, what are the five reasons you own dividend paying stocks? Or what are the three reasons? Why do you do this? So we, wrote, we that was another thing that we worked on this week, the Money Matters team. So we talked about that. In fact, I have six reasons I own dividend paying stocks. And, and that is also something uh, that uh, we will talk about today. We'll discuss. And something I'm writing for the AJC as well. So these are all the things that we need to tackle today. Uh, let's get to, there's, let's see here. Let's do this. Let, let's talk about dividends first because the, the, I take this for granted sometimes. We talk about income investing. Income in general is the, has been the theme of the show for, for many years. And sometimes we take some of these, these areas of the market for granted. And that's what we'll try to clear up some of the questions that we'll that we get about dividends. So, as you know, I'm a big believer in in dividend investing. So, for folks who know that philosophy, they know that dividend paying stocks are way way high on my list, at least, in, in assets to consider. And there's and and from, as far as I can tell, and what I want to talk about today, there's a lot of reasons to own the to at least have this as part of what you own as an investor. The first and the first item is that we have so little control in the world of investing and life just in general. And when it comes to, to investing, it's especially true that w there's only so many things we're able to control and we can't predict market highs. We can't predict market lows. Warren Buffett will tell you that. Peter Lynch will tell you that. Any investor will tell you that it's impossible to time the peaks and valleys of equity markets and or bond markets, both of those very, and what are the three markets we follow? We follow the stock market, the bond market, and the commodity market. All three of those areas have a, a giant degree of irrationalism baked in or emotion baked in, which makes timing them from a, from an asset, from a value perspective, very, very difficult. 
if you invest in dividend paying stocks, you can, you, you can at least have some control over a big piece of the investment. And that control comes largely in the form of the, the cash flow that you receive. So the stock dividends that you receive from those companies that pay perennial dividends year after year after year. Now, the div- of course, dividend payments can change. Companies can run into trouble. That happened to the banks, the big financial companies, and the, right as we went into the financial crisis, 2007 and 2008. And, and companies that had paid dividends for decades had to slash their dividend. But for the most part, Dividends are actually a very predictable piece of the overall equation. There, in fact, there are companies, and there are, there are a lot of companies actually, that have paid dividends for more than a hundred years and going. Over 100, over a century, publicly traded companies that pay, they're paying a hundred years ago, they're still paying today. And there's obviously even more than that have paid for over 50 years. So it's not as though the, we can't find these companies. It's not as though they're disappearing into the wind. There, there, there's, there's, a, there's a lot to choose from. And there's plenty of companies that ha- we can find that have paid steady dividends and quite frankly raised dividends just methodically over time without interruption. And here we are in a world of great uncertainty. Finding companies that, that are able to do this, these steady quarterly payouts, that helps me sleep a lot better at night. And that's one of the pieces of this equation because dividends allow us to control one of the very few pieces in investing that we are able to control, which is a, which is a giant piece of the equation. Hi, I'm Wes Moss, and thanks for taking a minute to hear about what's so different about my new book, You Can Retire Sooner Than You Think. So unlike other retirement books, this book will give you a step-by-step guide, whether in your 20s or 30s or 40s or 50s, to learn from what these successful and happy retirees did to get there. I hope you enjoy the book, but more importantly, I know that it'll help you retire sooner than you think.